Hey guys, there's a lot of times when we go in to make a repair on a controller that the access to that controller can be limited. Either it's in a room where people are going in and out, uh, like on the university campus, there will be times where classes are going on and you'll have just a short window of time to get in there to try to make a repair and to get the controller back in operation. One of the ways to minimize the time that this takes is to simply take a, another controller, load the programming into that controller, and have it ready to go to where you can simply swap out the device if necessary. That way you can get the room back in operation, you can get the controller repa replaced much faster, and you know cut, save yourself a lot of time and a lot of aggravation of people trying to get into a room where you're trying to make a repair. That's what we're going to talk about in this video. There are times where you may not have a program backup for a particular device. It's still possible to change this out if the older device is still online with your system. So we look here at the device which we are going to be replacing. This particular device has a mechanical problem with the actuator. So we can still pull the program from it. Here is the address for this particular device. What we're going to do is to use our controller configuration tool and we are going to upload the program out of the device over our network. Since, we, uh, since the device is still online, this is something that's very easy to do. Here we're going to drop down the selection tree, select the supervisory device that this controller is attached to, and we will... Let's see, let's scroll down a little more. Once we have that particular device selected, we're also going to select which trunk that it is under. Now that that is selected, we simply hit Next. Uh, yeah, we are correct here on the device location. We hit Next, and then it will upload the device for us. So, under this window, what it's doing now is going out and looking at everything on the trunk of this device. You can select it manually as far as the particular address, but this way it just pulls everything that is on the particular trunk for the device, and you'll simply scroll down, highlight the device that you want, hit Next, it's going to give you a review screen here. It's going to tell you the device identification. It's going to give you some information about it. Once you press finish, it's actually going to go out and upload the program from that particular device. Depending on the speed of your network, this can take a little bit of time. The faster your network, the uh, quicker it will upload. And of course, uh, if you're using a newer version of CCT, it's going to give the option of uploading and upgrading. Now here we have the jumpers for this device. This is where you're going to set the address. You have to set this, these jumpers correctly. If you do not set them correctly uh, using CCT, the program is not going to even load to the device. You have to have the jumper set for the address for the device that you're going to be replacing as well as the address must match that address in the programming. Some of your older programs like HVAC Pro and all that will allow you to push programs to different addressed devices. CCT will not. So you must have the correct address set on these jumpers. Preloading the program into this device will also ensure that when you make your network connection that the device should come back online with your system. Here we have a power supply connected as well as our Bluetooth adapter and we're ready for power. We're going to turn this on and once this VMA boots up we will be able to access it with the Bluetooth adapter and load the program back into this VMA. It takes it just a few minutes to boot up and we should be ready to go. Here is the program 
that we're going to be loading into that VMA and of course we want to save it once we have it uploaded and upgraded with CCT and instead of using the network we're actually going to select Bluetooth here since we're using our Bluetooth adapter now then once we press the next button here it's going to give us a an option of what it sees through the Bluetooth connection and it is of course being address specific it is only going to allow this program to be pushed to that particular address now here is our link you see the blue light on the Bluetooth adapter so we do have connection once we have that we simply press our next button since this controller was from a uh, previous version of CCT, we've got to upgrade the firmware in it. Our download screen automatically detects the version that is in that and gives us the option to upgrade the firmware in that device. That's something that we're going to definitely do. We press our next button and the program will begin its download. It will take this just a little bit of time since the device must be upgraded to a newer version and once that is done our controller should be ready to go uh, we make you know we just have to go to the room all we need to do now is simply make sure that we flip this jumper back to the correct position if we are going to a wireless thermostat once that is done we should be back in operation with a quick change out guys i hope this video is helpful to you if it is i would appreciate it if you would give it a thumbs up also drop me any comments with questions down below and visit my blog at systemcontroltech.com and thanks for watching